How do you know that your child is a bully? What are the signs? Well, it can be hard to see because we love our children, we want to think the best of them. But some of the signs can be that they are really good at directing play or social activities of other kids. They're always in the middle. If you see a kid that's in the center, you know, kids are usually in a circle, and but other kids are looking to a child for direction, that child has a lot of social power. And lots of times it can be very easy to abuse that social power. Second is that everything is a test of loyalty for that child, so you're either with them or against them. The third thing is that they really feel like that, that other kids are just weak or that they're insecure or that they just, they just you know, took it the wrong way. And so they dismiss, if they hurt somebody, they dismiss it like, oh, come on, mom, she's just so sensitive. You know that's the way that she is. And what's really important for a parent to remember is, is that your child does not get to define other people's experiences. And so, because lots of times kids will dismiss what they've done that's been hurtful. And then the last part is, and this can be really tricky for a parent, is if they are very verbal and very good at being persuasive and arguing, because if they're very good at arguing with you, imagine how persuasive they are with their peers. So those are a couple of the things that can help you sort of identify that you might have that kind of a kid on your hands. And what about at home? Are parents inadvertently giving kids the wrong message, message about bullying? Well, I think that, you know, really, again, parents are really trying to do their best. Um, I think that we honestly and very easily can get caught up. And, you know, I'm a mom myself and a teacher, so this is something I've experienced very much as a mother and in my, you know, in working with my own students. I think sometimes we love to be the mommy bear, right? Like, you mess with my kid, then I'm going to go after you. And we don't think about what we're teaching our child when we do things like that, when we just go. Because there really also could be another perspective. The other part is, is that your kid, when they come and tell you something has their own perspective but there really could be others and that's really important to remember because it's not because lots of times kids will come back to their to their parents kids who are bullies and they'll say mom there's no bullying in this school right but that's their perspective and the school does not have a population of one there are other perspectives that are equally valid talking about schools we polled online asking parents if they think that school if schools are doing enough um, right now 85 percent of them are saying no I think this is really tough about you know a lot of parents feel like you know schools aren't doing anything a because we see that a lot in the news and also there are people who have that experience now there are a lot of schools and teachers that are doing a really good job but I also want to point out to parents that there is something that they're doing that's making schools um, and teachers and principals lives much more difficult which is they are fighting schools about bringing cell phones into the school so a school will say to parents well we don't want cell phones here we need to have very rigid rules about this where we don't want them at all and the parents will say no we have to have our kids have cell phones well, when you do that, then you are contributing to the problem because cell phones make life more difficult because it makes it easier for kids to bully. So you really got to be able to look in the mirror and say, what are parents doing that are contributing to this dynamic? Um, now, at the same time, there are adults, there are principals, there are people in schools who are really abdicating their responsibility to kids. And they're saying, if it didn't happen on the school grounds, if I didn't see it, or if a teacher didn't see it, then it didn't happen, or I have no jurisdiction over that. Now, I want to be really clear with parents. If it happens on tech, in te with the technological world, there is no difference between the real world and the virtual world. What, what, is, what impacts in your child's life and technology very much impacts their, what happens in the school hallway. So schools have to be able to work with parents to be able to say, no matter where any of this takes place, we absolutely are going to work together to have community standards of how we treat each other. And if that means that you, we are putting down rules about denigrating, demeaning, and humiliating other kids in whatever way that happens, we are coming together as adults to absolutely say no and we will discipline on those issues. On that note, should kids that are being bullied have to go back to school? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think what we've really got to get to is that kids need to be able to, to confront the person if they're feeling physically safe, like they really don't feel that their life is in danger, then I really want to encourage kids and parents to be able to speak one time to the kid who's the bully one time. Not because it's the bully's going to agree with them, but because we want the child to have some degree of mastery, some degree of being able to take the bad feelings that they've got in their stomach and be able to put those words and then be able to speak those words. 
Now, I really understand that sometimes bullies, it's almost like they have mythological power, right? It's like, I can never, ever talk to this person. But your child has to be able to get uh, the skills at some point to be able to speak to somebody who's really intimidating to them. If they cannot do it, then you do need to go to a teacher or the principal or someone like that and go through it. But you also have to know what the rules are of the school because the school's going to have rules about what they say about the safety and security of their of their kids of their students you have to use those words don't go to the school complaining and freaking out and saying you better do this and you better do that use the words of the school to frame your conversation and say to the school look we're having a problem my kid can't focus in school because they there's a pattern of bullying here that that the kid can't focus and you've said in your school bylaws and your school guidelines that you are going to absolutely value that so you've got to be able to use the language, but you also have to be able to give your child some steps where they've got power all along the way. Now, if your kid goes through all of this stuff, and you've gone through all of this stuff, and the, the administrator or the principal cannot um, exhibit the leadership that they need to, then you can, and then I have absolutely no problem with kids leaving a school. Now, um, not just in school, but we've, there's been a lot of talk about cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. What are the five things and five ways that parents can help prevent cyberbullying? Well, first of all, don't have the cell phone in their bedroom at night when they go to sleep because the whole world comes through the cell phone and the kids are sleeping with it on their chest or next to them. And they're going to say to you, you can't take away my cell phone because I use it as an alarm. You can go and buy a $10 alarm and use that by the bed. So it's also when your kid is being targeted, it makes her feel like she just has to do it. She has to be on Facebook all night. She has to use her phone and text because she's trying to fix the problem and the problem cannot be fixed this way. It can't. So it is really imperative to get the cell phones out of their bedrooms. In fact, what I would do is take the cell phones and put it like underneath your pillow because they're going to do whatever they can to get it. Now you also can just go on your on the website and the service provider and you can control what time the phone the phone shuts off but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I've talked to parents who are a little bit like so I've tried it, it doesn't work. Um, the other part is is I want you to sit down with your kid and say look I'm giving this enormous privilege, right? This enormous tool. And you better use it according to my family values, which means that not only can you not create content that, per that demeans yourself or demeans other people, but you cannot forward it. And if you forward it, then I'm going to say that you've contributed to someone else's humiliation, which means I'm going to consequence you. And that consequence includes taking, obviously, away all of the technology, right? You can use your computer for, this is, this is where it gets stuff. You can use your computer for homework. I know you can minimize really fast, you know, to get down to Facebook and try and do this. If I find out you're doing it, I'm going to take it away even more for an even longer period of time. Then I'm going to, um, you're going to have to earn my trust back. And you've got to think of like, this is the mom and me. You've got to think of like the chores that your child hates doing the most. And then you have to give them those chores like so that they complain and they hate it. Because that's good, right? When they complain and they hate the punishment, that means the punishment is good. So you've got to do those three things and then be able to give them a way out of like, if you're able to do this and prove to me that you can be responsible about this then you can have it back but this is my this is my responsibility to you as a parent is to be able to teach you what my family my, our family values are in action with this with this technology stuff